All right, I, I just got back from this really, really cool, fucking cool audio shop in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and I want to tell you about it. Uh, Carrytown Audio in Richmond. And it's a beautiful shop, and the owner is a really personable dude. I mean, a really good dude. Um, I almost wish he wasn't, because... I came home with some shit. I mean, I came home with some equipment. And I'm looking around because I got to sneak this crap in. And, you know, like my wife is, you know, creeping around in there. And I got to sneak this crap in. And I want to tell you, I don't have time to make a long video tonight because I have some obligations. But um, I've got a Lab 12 vacuum tube um deck one reference it is a uh, vacuum tube um uh current to voltage converter and a multi-bit deck that uses phillips chips um this is on loan the circuitry in there i'm gonna pull i have permission from the owner to pull the uh, top off the circuitry is gorgeous and it just Everything about it, theoretically, is what I want. And I'll explain that later. But I, I did some auditioning there, and I just wasn't totally... The vacuum tubes are right in there somewhere. You can kind of... I don't know if you can see them or not. And I, I couldn't really tell. I mean, I've got to know for sure, so I had to bring it home. So the guy, the dude just said, man, take it home and listen to it. You want to talk about, I mean, he's a shop owner, but you want to talk about the best audio store I have ever been in, in terms of, well, I'll tell you later. It's the best audio store I've ever visited, ever. Just because, mostly because of the, first of all, it was immaculate, immaculate, it was, he had some good equipment there, and a lot of used, he does consignment, and a lot of beautiful classic gear, too. It was right up my damn alley, but... He was like, just take the thing home, man. Listen to it. Don't worry about it. I said, you want a deposit? No. Do you want a credit card? No, just take it home. I mean, he was really cool. But, look at this. Look at this. Single-ended, pure class A, KT-150s, stereo. I listened to this today. And it blew me the fudge away. And I'll tell you about this later. I can't sneak this in. This thing right here is like, you know, 10,000 pounds. And, I'm, and I, these transformers are just colossal. There's the power transformer and you have output transformers on either side. You've got the KT-150s right there. And you've got the driver tubes. It's the utmost of simplicity. Pure class A. And it's got a triode mode and a um, and a pentode mode. Um, it blew me away. It just fuck. I I didn't expect it. And he didn't push this on me. I saw it sitting there. And this is also um, this is also made by Lab Twelve. And it just blew me away. So um, I'll tell you more about it later, but to, I'm going to have to leave this amp in the car. There's no way I can sneak this amp in with my wife creeping around. Um, but I want to sneak this DAC in tonight, this multi-bit. It's got eight uh, TDA... Oh, damn it, I'm fucking... 1643... Oh, I'll tell you later. I'm having a senior moment. It's got eight Phillips multi-bit DAC chips running in parallel for averaging. The outputs don't run through op amps at all. That particular chip has a current output. You have to provide your own current to voltage uh, conversion. And it's got, uh, it's got two vacuum tubes. Yeah, I'm losing my memory. 62, uh, blah, blah. I'll tell you later. It's ECC84s, I believe. 82s, 84s. Losing my memory. Maybe it's because I'm happy. Or maybe it's because I've had wine already. 
But this is this right here, it looks like an amp or a preamp. No, this is a DAC. Look at these meters. And everything about this DAC. And by the way, that Phillips chip, and I remember the damn number. 1643, 14, blah, blah, blah. That particular DAC, and the reason why I like it, I know that DAC. And I heard this first, at, I didn't hear it. I, it was at the Capitol Audio Fest that I became enamored with it. But um, not no oversampling. Everything about this DAC, and, and those particular chips are like the digital equivalent of the 300V back, uh, B vacuum tube in terms of utter and total simplicity. I have those particular chips in uh, um, an old CD player that I bought specifically for that chip. Um, and I kind of sort of made a video about it back in the day and I got disinterested and moved on. But it, it, the CD player sounds great, but having that chip incorporated into, a, into modern circuitry with vacuum tubes, and I mean, you can kind of see, look, they're, they're uh, through-hole circuit boards. I'll pull this off. Look at, look at the, uh, the capacitors in there. Can you read that? quality of the oh and by the way not chinese these are made in athens greece by uh it's a reputable company been around since uh, i think 2012 the electrical engineer dude started the company anyway it's just speaking my language and the build quality is excellent do i sound excited i need to sneak this in the first thing i'm going to do um, this will operate as a computer DAC. There are drivers. You plug it in, it'll download the driver for it. But I want to use this as a DAC in my main system. Uh, but I'm going to sneak it in tonight. And we're going to talk about the 300B single-ended triode pentode um, Lab 12. What model is this? It's got a weird name. Look. Handmade in Greece. Not Chinese. Um, no. It's called the uh, Suno. S U O N O. Suno. If you want to look it up on the web. <coughs> These are both um, demos. Um, I got like 20% off on that one because I actually bought that mofo right there. This I didn't buy because I was not convinced of the sound yet. Not yet. So he just lent me this thing. Take it home. Don't worry about it, bro. And you want to talk about a dude, Carrytown Audio in Richmond. You go in there, the guy's as friendly as can be, doesn't push anything on you, nothing. And the place, it's a gorgeous, excellent environment. I'll talk about it later. Anyway, I got to sneak this damn thing in. How do I sneak this deck in? I don't know. But I'm going to, I'm making this in one cut right now. Um, when I get it all hooked up and sneak everything in, and um, we'll talk about it later. I'm going to pull the cover off and look at it, but I'm going to listen to it first. If, if I don't like the sound, it's pointless for me to uh, to show you the innards and all that. i got to like it first to invest that kind of emotion into it. Okay, that's it. That's where I was today, all damn day in, uh, in Richmond. This is a company called Lab 12. Check out their website if you've never heard of them. Handcrafted in Athens, Greece. I love it. And, you know, I don't know if you guys have had experience with the company, but just everything about the philosophy of the company speaks my language. Again, I got enamored with them at the Capitol Audio Fest months ago, and uh, it's been in the back of my mind, but now I've actually acted on it. Um, I said I wouldn't buy anything new, but I guess I'm a damn addict. I'm going to have to go to... Uh, Audioholics Anonymous AA. Ciao, guys. I'll talk to you real soon. I hope you enjoy this video. And um, I'll be back to talk about this stuff. And then, of course, when I get those clip horns up in the room, we're going to listen to this stuff through the clip horns as well as all the other equipment. It's going to be fun. Gee, I'm sure glad I closed down my channel, huh? Talk to you later. Ciao. Okay. All right. There it is. It's hooked up. Those beautiful round VUs are hooked up. I plugged in the USB. Let's go to the back. So I've got, I'm running 
USB from the computer. And then I'm running the XLRs. Hold on. The XLRs from the Lab 12 DAC up to the Macintosh. Still love those green tubes. So that's the back. The power switch is on the back of the Lab 12. Right there, I've got to be quiet. My wife's in the other room. All right. When I plugged it in, the drivers got downloaded automatically. You just select, here's the, here's the source button, the input button. You just keep hitting input until, uh, I kept hitting input until um, I selected USB. And sound just started coming out. Now I'm about to listen to it through the headphones. Let's turn the light out and get a look. Mm, look at that. Let me turn this sideways so you can get a chance to see the meters. And, uh, yeah. I mean, I think it's beautiful. But how does it sound? I'm about to start listening. I'm going to listen through my main system, through the Cornwall 3s later. I want to start by auditioning through the computer. And through the Macintosh. Right there. Alright, that's what I'm about to do. Um, for, 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 for those of you, of you who, who can relate to uh, you know, being an audiophile, this is one of those exciting days. Again, this is on loan. This is on loan. I haven't decided to purchase it. The guy was really cool about it. Um, and I'll tell you about the circuitry later. If it sounds good, we'll open it up and we'll discuss the circuitry and what makes it special. It's very special. It's a unique. There's nothing like it on the market. But it's all irrelevant if it doesn't sound good, right? So, what I expect to hear, based on the circuitry, based on the design of the circuitry, um, I expect it, uh, first of all, specs are out the window. I don't do specs specifications anymore. I don't, I, those are out the window. That comes with wisdom. When you're younger, you love specs, but when you get older, like me, you throw that shit out the window. It means nothing. It's all about the sound. And I don't even look at specs anymore because I don't want to be biased. I don't want uh, unconscious or subconscious bias. I don't. I just want to know how it sounds. So, having a sip of coffee right now. Um, I'm going to listen to it. And if it sounds good... Then I'm going to sub it into my main system, listen to it through the Cornwalls, driven by the Macintosh C8 tube preamp. And then I'll start to assess the sound. If I determine that I want to purchase it, then we'll talk about it. All right. So there you go. Talk to you all real soon. Bye-bye. Ciao. Stereo police out. Just a quick update. Right now, I'm fudging blown away. And I don't know if it's because of the driver. I'm, I'm, I'm suspect. It's so damn good. Uh, I, need to, I need to sub this DAC into my main system without a driver. But I am absolutely blown away. And there are a few pieces of equipment that have ever blown me away. This DAC here, right now, makes this thing look like an amateur. And this has the same Sigma Delta chip in it as the benchmark. This is got eight parallel Phillips chips in it that were, de that were developed, uh, the utmost of simplicity, that were developed and designed in the late 80s and sold in the early 90s. I am blown away and I'm going to tell you what the spatial qualities of the sound I'm hearing I'm now listening to my headphones okay remember the DAC is feeding the Macintosh and I'm listening to the Sennheisers I've been disappointed with the Sennheisers with respect to bass I am hearing bass. I am hearing a full spectrum of frequency response now, including bass that I've never heard through these things. It's magnificent. It's unbelievable. 
the spatial qualities. And I mean, um, okay, I, I'll get into it later. It's just blowing me away. Now remember, this is using these old Phillips, averaging these eight chips together, these old Phillips chips, multi-bit chips, uh, driving a vacuum tube output stage. It is blowing me, it's blowing my mind. I can't believe it sounds so good. I'm suspect that the driver somehow is adding some kind of, um, adding some kind of equalization. That's how good, it's too good to be true. I, I just, I can't believe it. It's just too good to be true. That's why I want to sub it into my main system without a driver. I can't believe it. I'm suspect. I really am. I'm not bullshitting you. It sounds like it's been equalized. Um, not real. I mean, not in a bad way. I mean, it just sounds too good. With, I'm comparing these. This is using chips developed in the early '90s, multi bits, driven by a vacuum, driven by driven by vacuum tube buffers. There's not a single op amp in the um, in, in 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 the signal path, and it, it's com competing against the same um, Saber chip that's used in the um, the exact same one that's used in the in in, in the acclaimed benchmark. And I don't even want to listen to this thing again. I mean, honestly. And I always, I thought that for some reason that the Sennheisers lacked a bass, but they don't now. It's tight. It's, I mean, I, okay, listen, let me, let me just move on. I listened to a reference song that I've been listening to my entire life. I know how it should sound on every piece of equipment I ever owned, driven to tears. It was just remarkable. I mean, remarkable. And I want to tell, I want to give you a commendation. If you guys want to be blown away, if you want to be blown away by some music, I listen to, and I want you to, I'm going to commend this to you. Just go listen to it on your own system. And watch the video, okay? This is uh, Hoover Phonic live in 2012. There it is, Hoover Phonic. The song is called Eden. It's live in 20... I can't pronounce word. They're um, a Scandinavian band. Uh, Denmark, I believe. And the lead singer, uh, she has English as her second language. But I want you to watch this video. I mean, I've, I've always admired this video, but it's just remarkable. It's with a full orchestra, and it's just a beautiful song and well done here. Anyway, I'm familiar with the song. I listened to it, and it just blew me away. It's just absolutely captivating. I cannot believe how good this thing sounds. And even though I purchased the, uh, the single-ended uh, KT-150, Class A vacuum tube amp, I mean, I really can't afford to buy this damn thing. I'm going to have to go like, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get sticky fingers or something, do a five finger discount or something. I, I don't know. I don't know how I'm, I, yeah, if it sounds this good in my main system, I'm just, I can't live without it, honestly. And I, it's one of the be best things I've ever said about a component, period. It's remarkable. Lab 12. I mean, I, I and again, I was turned on to it at the Capitol Audio Fest. I was, okay, enough said. I'm terminating the video right now. We'll talk about more of it later. I hope you found this enjoyable and useful. Give you something to think about. I want you to listen to the song. You know, forget, forget about the DAC. Just for your own listening pleasure. Check out Hoover Phonic. The song is Eden. They did a whole live show, which is all magnificent. These are, it's a great band. But listen to Eden. And uh, the lead singer, beautiful lady. Um, let's see if I can. Um, and again, realize that English is not her first language. And in fact, I'm not even sure she speaks English. She's just singing the song. It's done. It's done in English. But it's a beautiful voice. It's the full orchestra. It's it, it's just fantastic. And I'm going to commend that to you for homework tonight, just for a musical experience. Stereo Police. I'm going to go get my first glass of wine and enjoy the rest of it. tonight in audio file nirvana. I know you guys have been there before too. I hope you share my enthusiasm. I love you guys. 
Ciao. Talk to you real soon. Stereo Police. Hey guys, this is just an add-on to the video. I keep I it, I intended to only make the first part of this video, but I keep adding on to it. Listen, I've I've listened more. You know, I'm trying to put into words why this is so good, and I can tell you. And you know, multi bit this multi bit deck, these Phillips chips, fifteen forty three, I think. Um, you know. Hang on a second. I'll put the phone down. We're going we're gonna to get to the bottom of this. And I'm going to tell you why it sounds so good. Bear with me. Um, the phone is sitting down on its side. But, uh, uh, we have 12. Okay. Hang on just a second. This is, you know, uh, when I say unscripted, this is so improv. Okay. Here's the Lab 12 website. And up here, I want to go to downloads, and I want to download the DAC one owner's manual so I can recollect what the damn chip is. Fifteen forty three. There we go. Eight matched parallel. Th now each fifteen forty three is a stereo DAC. All right. So there's eight of them in parallel, and they're averaged. In a sophisticated configuration, blah, blah, blah. It's got the VU meters, the Nisu uh, glass, blah, 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 blah. Totally handcrafted. Uh, you know, but pure analog sound with no oversampling. Okay, and, that, and that's, you know, I've never really looked into the, what oversampling does, but it's very, oversam oversampling is incredibly artificial. And I've reached that point in my life, and that's why I bought the, um, uh, you know, I've got the Macintosh C8 vacuum tube preamp, and there's nothing more natural than vacuum tubes, and nothing more simple. Um, at this point where I'm about simplicity, because I find it to, to sound more natural, I don't give a rat's tail about specs anymore. It means nothing to me. In fact, I think there's like this bell curve where, you know, of course, if, if you have like 10% harmonic distortion, it's going to sound like crap. And then you lower the harmonic distortion to about 1%. And then things start sounding, you can't really tell, things start sounding organic. And then when you get to the point where you get to 0.0000000002%, things start sounding like steel rails, you know, ice cold, cold-hearted nothingness. When you get to that 1% THD, and that's where about two bands, not, not one, like, so let's say 0.1%. Even 1% to 0.1%, we're in that realm. That's where active components start to show their own personality. And that's where things, you know, men are separated from the boys. You know, that's where things really start to shine, including vacuum tubes, you know. And where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So... The reason I add, uh, had this add-on is I'm, I'm trying to put into words why this thing sounds so good. So I'm, I'm, I was continuing to listen to some more police songs and the attacks. You know, the, the, the Stewart's drums are, 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 are wound tight. They're, they're, they're tuned very tight. And the attacks on the drums and the crispness of the cymbals. And when he hits the, uh, the, splash, uh, the splash and when he hits the, um, the crash cymbals... The attacks are just unlike anything I've ever heard, and in, including the bass, and everything just sounds so organic, and back to what I remember things sounding like in the early 80s, okay? And I'm going to leave you with this, I'm not, I'm not focusing here. It makes me think that Delta Sigma or Sigma Delta, either way, what are you going to call it, the type of conversion that's used in modern chips, there's something seriously flawed with that type of conversion. I mean, seriously flawed. I don't care if they produce numbers of 0.0002 THD. I don't care. There's some X factor. They're not producing the attacks and decays. And there's some, they're, you know, it's just not organic. I'm telling you, 
right now, I might change my mind when it goes into my main system when I hear it through actual loudspeakers. But right now, I've never heard anything like it. This is an add-on video. Now I'm going to say, finally, my fifth chow. This is the fifth and final chow. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm having a blast. Hope you are too. Stereo Police.